Greetings, this is Pen Tim. How are you, Max? I'm good. Nice to hear you, Pen Tim. It's been a while since we've spoken. I just wanted to, uh, you to double check who wanted to speak and what's the uh, situation. Well, unfortunately, there is a lot of interesting negativity going on. I do not like to talk about negativity, negativity uh -huh. as a rule, but I think that perhaps in this case, you need to know about it. Uh -huh. There is a species that is made of energy, and they are very ancient. They've been around, oh, probably half a million years that I know of, and probably longer. They used to be a Draco, a, a Draconian species, but now they are a energy species. They have evolved into a light energy kind of species. We're not, you can't see them. No one can actually see them unless they make themselves visible. They are called the Wasa Draca, or Draco, or something, Wasa Draca, or Draga. I'm not even sure. That is similar to what they're called, but they are, they are attacking the Earth intermittently, and they are, they're targeting those that have the greatest missions that are not protected properly. Um, okay. So you're finding, perhaps, that uh, there is a um, an increase in emergency calls. However, the, what you were uh, experiencing early today, Jim, was that um, there was there is a ship of uh, I'm not sure what species it was because it's it's out of phase right now. But it is experiencing attack from the the Wasa Draca as well. They are very much a positive species and they were sending out um, different, um, asking for help from different areas. And they had seven different help signals and one of them was SOSOS, -S -S, um, which was for the humans to listen to. Uh, they were even calling humans to help them. So it, I do not know what happened because we do not have a reading on them at this time and they are out of phase. So I don't know uh, what is going on with them at this time, but we have not heard from them in the last um, 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, let's invite uh, either... This uh, people from the ship to speak, or uh, maybe our friendly dragons to speak. The Wasa Draco have no, not. No, no. Not the Wasa, the, the friendly ones. Ah, oh, the friendly reptile, the friendly draconians. You mean like Ish, the or someone like that? Uh, whoever is available, maybe uh, the ones from Earth you would be most. The or ones, Donner. One, or Donner from the White Dragons. Yeah, someone from Solar System, dragons from Solar System, who are involved here. Very well. Let me see if I can contact one of them. That there is someone that may know something about this. All right. We have very limited information at this time. All right. Okay. So, but and we would rather report on more positive things anyway. But okay. just for your safety and to protect, we would like to let them know that this is happening. But I do not see an attack happening at the moment anywhere on your planet. We do get readings for it, and, but I do not see any at the moment. One moment, please. All right. It was good to see you, Max. Nice to have you. One moment, please.
I am Tienza. Welcome, Tienza. Now, I am from the alias Shondai Zendi, who is a we are a reptilian species. The Draconians will not respond at this time. Okay. But I can give you a small report. We do have okay. the ability to track this particular species that you speak of. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they are isolated attacks, and they are very intense, driving the person almost to unconsciousness at some point. So we are putting out a shielding effect to know when they are entering the atmosphere. Whenever they do enter the atmosphere, we will notify the galactic councils and galactic governments so that they may deal with them if they can. I know that the blue avians are able to, to not destroy them, but to uh, cause them to be uh, stopped. I do not know the correct word for what I'm trying to say. It is actually, they freeze them in their tracks, basically. Mm -hmm. and they are the only species that is around Earth that can even deal with them in some way. Now, having said that, they can get around the blue avians at times, but for the most part, the blue avians have adapted to them. So they are your hope okay. for stopping these attacks. So what's the purpose and what's the reason? Why would they bother they to, to bother stop us. anyone from doing a mission that has worldwide ramifications. They want to stop the positivity. They would prefer that these people, that is why the attacks are so intense, as these are the people that are to do great things and be noticed worldwide for the most part, or have something to do with many people being moved in a positive direction. So they are out to stop a positive movement or an ascension process. All right. Uh, what motivates them? Why would they do that? Because they are a negative species and, and they would prefer that the world destroy itself so that they may take over eventually. They ah. will not destroy it, but they will cause you to destroy yourselves. I see. Uh, <clears throat> Does it bother you? Is, it, is there other any attacks on your species? Our species is helping yours. So yes, we are in danger of attack. However, we, they know that we do not have a great influence on your governments or on all of your people. So attacking us would do little good. Do you know the history of this Draco species? Draco species? They are ancient. They have been around a very long time and evolved from dragon-like creatures into pure energy or very close to it. Okay. The thing is, about 80,000 years ago, they became a negative species. You would think that a negative species would not be able to evolve, but technologically they were very advanced and they evolved themselves in many ways. So they did not have the evo a natural evolution and so therefore it is very technologically advanced. Uh-huh, okay. So they could they have destroy this world if they wished, but they would prefer to rule it instead. Uh, do they have uh, 
material means or are they all in the, in the non-physical? They do have material means, but they can run it from an energy perspective. They uh -huh. can, all they I have see. to do is think, and their technology is activated. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you think it would be worth uh, uh, talking to Blue Avians about them right now? The Blue Avians are the only ones in your solar system that have any control of them at all. They have stopped a few of the attacks and are now more concentrated on their movements than they were before. However, I do not think they can destroy them. Can you ask Blue Avians if they want to speak through Jim right now? I may ask them, yes. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Greetings. You Greetings. have called the Blue Avians. Yes. Is there a, a purpose for this call? Yeah, we just learned about the attacks by some species of energetic energy uh, beings uh, of Draca descent. The uh, Wasa Draca. Wasa Draca. Uh, Wasa Draca. So, can you exp expand any more on uh, what's happening, what's their history, what's their motivation, and what should we do? They are from a very far distance. However, all they have to do is think of where they want to be, and uh -huh. they can be there very quickly. They are very advanced. Okay. They are a pure, almost pure energy species. They do have ways of creating very advanced technologies, but we are the only ones in this area that can stop them from doing great harm. We cannot stop them from all the attacks, but we can stop them from killing anyone or destroying anything. We have been able to freeze them in their tracks, so to speak, a few times, and they are getting more powerful. We are trying to adapt our technology to them. Wonderful, thank you for explaining. So what, what, is there anything we can do on our side? You are pretty much helpless against them. Mm -hmm. They are very powerful and you cannot see them. And their technology is very advanced. We have learned something from um, isolating them about their movements and their technology. Mm -hmm. We'll not be able to destroy them, but we will be able to stop them from destroying Earth. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I just wonder why would they bother? Like, uh, you know, I have so much. Uh, is the planet so interesting to them? Or what? what yes. Would they... This planet is the savior of the galaxy in many ways. Uh -huh. The DNA from the people of this planet is very valuable. Mm -hmm. And Gert McNear has been gathering as much DNA from this population as possible. It is making... Mm -hmm made into serums that are helping other species. Mm -hmm. Remember what happens with hybridization. Hybridization usually makes for a healthier person if you interbreed mm -hmm. with other species. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So therefore, Earth is one of the most interbred species in the universe. Therefore, uh-huh. Their DNA, after th- hundreds of thousands of years, is now so valuable to the universe that many would try to stop it from happening so that they could remain in power. If there are too many that are helped, brought back into their greater good, great, a better body, thought process, and intellect, they will not be as successful. Uh, the last thing I didn't get. Uh, can you explain? Yes. Human DNA, there, well, let me put it this way. There are several species, such as the Anunnaki, the Chakani, Sasani beings that are becoming extinct because they are pure intellect and not become and not healthy enough to actually translate into the next realm of energy so therefore they do need human dna to help their bodies become healthy again they need also the dna to help them revitalize emotional processes because decision making is not as good in pure intellectual circumstances as it is with emotional additions along with it. Does that make sense to you? Yep, yep, yep. Therefore, there are many species that need human DNA, the serums that are being made from their DNA. Thank you very much. I got it. Um, is there anything else we should know, or is it about everything that you can tell us about this story? Well, first of all, it has to be donated. They cannot steal the DNA. That would be a punishable, a severe punishable offense. Yes. So that is why they're waiting for humans to donate their DNA. And that is why Girk Fichnir is making serums out of it to help the galactic population. Okay. Thank you. Um, I wanted to speak also to Kenjin. Is Kenjin available? Kenjin from the planet Era. Yep. Yes, I believe he might be. Thank you very much for your help, and uh, I'll invite him if he's available. I will. Have a good day. Good day. Greetings, this is Ken Jean. Ken Jean, thank you for coming. Welcome. I understand that there is an attack on your planet. I was uh-huh. given this information um, within the last week. Uh-huh. What is it that you wish to speak to me about? The Blue Avian said that it was probably related to this subject matter. Yeah, I I just wonder, in, uh, in your history, you probably had many attacks of that kind. So what happened and how it was resolved? What's the, what's the storyline? I do not ever remember this particular species ever attacking us. We have been attacked by other species, but never by one that was pure energy. Uh-huh. So I cannot tell you what the outcome of this particular attack will be because I have really not experienced anything like it. We have attacked, been attacked by other species that were similar to us and even more advanced than us. But um, there are other places that came to our rescue so that we might be saved. There is a good 
uh, ally system here in the galaxy as well as on most planets. I see, I see. Thank you. Uh, so who are our best uh, protectors from your, as you understand it? Uh, the blue avians are your best protectors. Excellent. Thank you much. Also, there are others that will align with the blue avians to be helpful to you. I cannot say that other species will be as effective, but if they give their alliance and their help to um, the blue avians and give them what they need to work with, then I believe that you will be all right. At least I pray so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you check if Grindel is available? I just wanted to bring his attention to that. I wanted to chat with him. Grindel. Very uh -huh. well. Let me see if he is available. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming, yes. Wait a minute. Uh-huh. Not here yet. Mm. All right. I mean, I'm almost here. But, man. Hold your horses. <laughs> yeah, human expressions are great. Love that one. Hold your horses like you're going to pick them up and cuddle them like a baby or something. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me at all mm, nah. um, but yet it, it seems to be an effective expression alright what did you need um, how are you I am um, actually okay but the person that I just left in Israel probably is feeling a great deal of drained by now so uh -huh. When I leave, he gets, he just pretty much drains out and feels very tired. I, I just had Jim to channel several beans in a row. So, uh, you know, take care of his body because uh, I don't think ever I, I uh, will switch the channels that frequently, that often, that many. Yeah, no, he'll be okay for the moment. What did you need? I just wanted your perspective on this. Um, energy dragon attack no yeah i've been hearing about that a little bit nothing has been happening in in um the israeli government portion of the, this because none of them are uh doing any kind of ascension work they're more doing more human kind of government work so uh -huh. that, it appears that they're attacking uh, great light workers that have big missions. Uh -huh. I have looked into it a little bit, not a great deal because I don't really know a whole lot of those people, a few of them, but they, the ones that I know seem to be okay at the moment. But I also know that the ones that I know have a lot of protection around them and have spiritual protection. Now, if you don't have like a few angels at your house all the time, you're, uh, you're gonna probably be attacked. All right, so. If you're someone that important. So, so angels are our best protection, I, wonderful. I, I'm gonna tell them to call in angel protection. And even there's one that does that already that got in t are so attacked that he doesn't even feel like he may survive. But I think he will. He will. We sent a lot of energy to him. So uh, he needs it, though. His name is William. Send energy to him. Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, is he supposed to channel tomorrow? Who? Uh, will... Um... No, not that William, a no. different one. A different one, all right, okay. No, not that one. 
This William is in Idaho. All right, so we are sending our healing to William in Idaho. Correct. All right. And so I, um, I remember there was a book, by, well, it's actually my favorite, the most favorite book. Which and is that? It, uh, it's called A Billion Years Before the End of the World. Yeah. A billion years before the end of the world. And it is exactly about that scenario, about a uh, story about some energy attacking uh, perspective studies and perspective scientists, perspective um, uh, <coughs> mm, light workers. Yeah. And it's about what you do under the pressure, which is much bigger than you. And, uh, uh, you know, the choice is do you stop or do you continue? <laughs> yeah, it's, you have to continue. There's no real choice. There's no right. real choice. If the if the book said to stop, then it was wrong. You have no choice. If you have a great mission, you have to continue, even if you're going to die doing it. You have to do it. Uh -huh. And the main uh, storyline there was like a phrase was there, like a poetry. A line which is and I was told that uh, my road and and I, and I came to the ocean of death no the valley of and I came to the valley of death and I was scared and I turned away and since then I'm I'm lost uh, in um, in many uh, rotten paths something like that yes you have to go yeah, um, I understand that phrase. I really do. Uh, but I cannot really advise that I know the uh, actual text. But I can tell you this. If you come to that valley of death, you have to walk through it because that doesn't mean you're going to die. If you're at the valley of death, you can sometimes get through it okay. The thing is about that. You have to call on all kinds of protection to get through it. And, and if you are doing it for your mission, oh my goodness, how many people are going to be helped as you're walking through there? It's going to be amazing. Even though it might be rough, it'll be very amazing as well. Very rewarding. I have to tell them that because there are some... I see, you know, I'm connecting right now to about four different people uh, that are now starting to fear for their lives because they haven't yet been uh, attacked, but yet they are great, uh, have great missions. But don't fear that. Don't fear that. Keep moving forward. You cannot let the fear destroy you. You have to be strong in the positive because the positive actually works against the negative so just bring all your positive energies in all your angels all your help all everything um that's what you gotta do you may not even be attacked because they're they're just going for the highest energy areas right now and it's been very very few attacks only about seven that i know of Yeah, at least from them. Uh huh. So I was, um, I have uh, always uh, wanted to speak to the author of that book. It would be Arkady Strugatsky. He is now in the spirit. Yeah, what's his Can name? You? Arkady Strugatsky. Yeah, Arkady Strugatsky. Can you check if he is available? Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else before I go? Oh, we love you. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, you say that just to get a rise out of me, don't you? Uh, um, no, actually, that was uh, uh, yeah. just to to lift you up. I'm just kidding you. I'm just kidding you. All right, have a good day, and um, I'll bring what's his name to you. Arkady Strugatsky. What's his Isaac? Arkady. Isaac Arkady. No, Arkady Strugatsky. Arkady, Arkady Strugatsky. Well, well I'll, I'll see if he's available. All right, thanks. Yeah. 
Where is he from? From Russia. Yeah, I thought so. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, oh, here we go. Mm. Yeah. 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 This is our Cody. Oh, welcome. Yay. Здравствуйте. Очень рад с вами говорить. Thank you for coming and welcome. And uh, it was ni it's nice to speak to you. Yes. It is unusual. No one calls me for this. Uh, I'm surprised. You, you have been remembered a lot. Um, and I really, the, it is interesting to know that I am being remembered because some people thought I was a little um, unusual. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't think you were that unusual, but yeah, I guess somewhat. So uh, what do you think about that scenario? We have, um, we're basically in a, in, a, in a playing out your book, a uh, billion years be before the end of the world, the milliard led the Kansa Sveta. And uh, there are uh, energy attacks on, on uh, light workers and, be, on, and people who are, are destined to make big changes, big positive changes in the planet. Yes. The thing is about this book is it is to let people know that this is a warning for them, a, a something they can look at to protect themselves to let them know what is happening so they may change their thought process about how they will react to this kind of thing. You see, having read and written, read, written and read this book, I reread it and I said, it is a preparation for those who read it for the future, because I know, I absolutely know and knew that there would be great attacks on the most positive ac activities in the world. And if you are one of those people um, with positive activity moving forward, then you must be prepared and uh, hopefully that many people who are preparing for their missions will read this and, and reconsider what actions they will take during this period of uh, great uh, trouble. I wonder how you wrote these things. Uh, how clear for you was the vision of the future, how much you guessed and how much it was clear. It is hard for me to put into words how I was able to see it because I was sworn not to tell how I was given some of this information, but I can tell you that it was very clear uh, that it was a probable future by, it was very clear that it was a probable future, let's put it that way, and that it was clear that um, the way it was presented would definitely change people's minds if, if they were in this position. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have a personal contacts with the aliens when you were alive? Well, I believe they were, yes. 
Mm -hmm. I believe there was some contact that I could not explain who they were after I spoke to them. And in a couple of those scenarios or cases, they never ever were seen again. Um, this was extremely curious to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, it couldn't be the source of your uh, writing because you wrote a lot of things and it was the future and the uh, uh, information was shining through very brightly in your, in your writings. So you were able to glimpse in many things and uh, I'm still reading your books and still recognizing a lot of a lot of things which you surprised in the guest or learn somehow. Yes, it was not a guess. In most cases, it was shown to me. Was it, it spiritual or technological? How did it happen? It was more spiritual than technological because some of it came in dreams. Some of it came it with conversations about the future with these people that I spoke of. And some of it came even in other ways, but I cannot divulge that at this time. Mm -hmm. Also, as you wrote, you started very positively and the more you wrote, uh, it was more pessimistic and more pessimistic and more pessimistic. And then your brother continued and it became even more pessimistic. Let me tell you this. When you write and you are very optimistic, then people have nothing to worry about and they do not find a, any need to change. When you write in a pessimistic or negative way to invoke positive action. I play, I wrote so that people would not so much associate themselves with pessimism, but to pull themselves away from it and to act differently toward it. It was a way of invoking a thought process in them that might be positive. Because then they could see, I am not going to do it that way. I am not going to be that way. I am not going to think that way. It, I must be positive so that these things do not come to pass. What's your spiritual connection to your brother? You seem to have the common mind. Are you somehow uh, spiritually connected in a special way? My brother and I were brought up very similarly and we shared the same idealisms in many ways, and we love each other in a very spiritual way. Um, he was surely a very big influence to me and support for me. Yeah, when, when, when you died, you sort of, you, his writing became uh, less interesting, like, Two of you made it much more uh, energized, I would say. He was missing my energy, although that's very emotional, a very emotional time. He was missing me so much that he could not think properly because my energy was directly connected to 
his energy I want to thank him for all that he has given to me because without his energy, my energy would be less as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, after I left, I am sad to say his energy was not the same. Mm -hmm. So one of your uh, main uh, main topics was the creation of the new human race like like blavatsky's um uh, six six root race and you called it ludens like um from uh, people in russian would be ludi so it would be ludens like new people i would say um so how much do you see it now you know in in your in your description they were pretty autistic and uh, not m very much humans they were like very uh, uh called to the old humans and that's sort of a scary thought that we are giving birth to the to the new race which will not care about us do you see it this way from from new perspective not exactly but <clears throat> there is new humans coming and they will not be exactly how I said. Um, that was a very pessimistic outlook. Um, they will be different, but they still will be new. I still see them coming. Mm -hmm. But would you say see them cold and uh, not no, getting? No, I or? see them that way now. I see them differently. They are, they are definitely above. What it is is this. There will be a separation. Mm -hmm. The separation will be those that would decide to move forward and those that decide to stay back. But it will be more, it will not be that the new human race will be called but they will have to be forwardly oriented and not looking back. Not that they are cold, not that they are carefree or care less about those that have not decided to move forward, but they are, they must do what they must do. And if these people decide not to be with them, then they cannot let them hold them back. One of your um, last books and uh, one of the most darkest books is uh, The Doomed City, Grada Bricione, Doom, Doomed City, the, the city which is doomed. And there you kind of outline the human civilization as a failed experiment. And you look at it as... Uh, and it still can be. <laughs> there is, it still can be that way, but I'm hoping that it will not be. But I still see there is a chance for that. I still see that humanity has not turned the corner for total positivity, but still is able to destroy themselves and become the dark place. But I am not saying that that will happen, but I, I want people to be aware that it is how I see humanity moving forward as a whole. There are bits and pieces of it that are not included in that, of course that are changing their lives and moving in different direction, but there's much darkness. In one of, uh, in this book, you kind of look at the same, same city, Doom City, as uh, from very dis different perspectives. And one of those is that it is by itself is a hell. And we are being he sent here 
basically to hell here. It's it's uh it's sort of a punishment for us, and there is no way out. Well, look at it. If you look at it, uh, the philosophically, it is true. This is once you leave this planet by death, you are in a much better place. So this would be hell. This would be the dark place. This would be the testing grounds. It would be the place before the good place. And at the end of the book, the main hero, sort of positive hero, kills himself uh, through killing uh, a mirror image of himself, basically. Can you explain the meaning? It seemed like to be the answer. Yes. Once, once he killed the reflection, he is not killing himself, but a reflection of himself. The reflection is imperfect. Reflections are always imperfect in some way. And so to end the hell, to end the imperfection, he must do this and, and go to a better place. But yet, mankind looks at suicide as very negative, as, as a punishment in the next life but in this sense if you are killing the mirror image you are only doing it because you are you are sure that it is not reality but in his case it was a reality it was uh but yes he was okay. he basically he met himself exactly he killed him but the thing is, he was looking at it differently than what he experienced. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So it was the thought process and not the reality that was in control. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you understand that? Uh-huh, yeah. I thought All it right. was really brilliant myself. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's it's it, it is big for us. It is big. We still uh, puzzled it, by the book and by the interpretation it, of it. That is like it's, about, it's similar to if there had been understanding of holographic uh, uh, technology, then he would have seen himself in the holograph. But the holograph would be real. All right, so um, so coming back to the idea that a uh, billion years before the end of the world, an attack by the negative forces that are much stronger than us. And we are, yeah. facing, we are facing yeah. that attack, and we have to make a choice whether to go through the value of death or to stop and live normal life. This is correct. But what I have seen from here is uh -huh. that those that have been attacked have not turned to darkness, have not turned away from their missions, but are too weak to do them at this time. But strength is coming. Reinforcements are coming. Yeah, I also noticed in my life many times it was many times in the past that when I come to the break point, when I am about to break through a certain barrier and uh, I guess the discovery barrier or some other barrier, I get a lot of resistance from the storyline, from the, um, I get bad luck and, and things of that sort. The, the, the things don't go my way. There is a lot of resistance of the matrix to any big change, any especially any positive change. So I think we are facing it like constantly, just this time it materialized in a more describable manner, but I think it is 
a nature of the of the game, isn't it? Of course. It <laughs> is inevitable of, for any planet or any society. They will always face greater challenges. And it is how they deal with them that makes the difference. If it is a positive outcome, then it, they have handled it correctly. But that many times, listen carefully, it may seem like they've made many mistakes in their decisions. But the outcome still comes out good because the intention behind the mistakes comes through greater than the actions that have been taken because in the end, the intention of all things is what will win the war. I do not think that people see that as well as, ah, Gandhi, look at him. How many errors did he make? How much did he fail? But yet, his intentions in the end won out. Yep, when, I, when I'm stuck, I read your book. I read it like, close to 20 times, I guess. Every time I'm stuck in, uh, in this or in despair, that's the book I read. Interesting. So then it was my intention that made it good. Um, the success of that book for me is that the intention that you read it for is positive. I thank you very much. It was so big pleasure to speak to you in that capacity. Um, do you do you mind? Can you ask uh, Master Kudhumi to come over? Um, Kudhumi. Yes, I know who that is. Thank you. It was a very interesting little talk. Thank you. And you be well. Thank Remember, you. If, if you are negative, do it for the right reason. Ah, I am cool to me. How are you? Hello, how are you? Thank you for I coming. Wonderful. I am wonderful as always. And how are you doing, Max? I do remember you, yes. Mm. Uh, so we have the situation and I just wonder, wanted uh, you to Mm, discuss it from from your perspective so oh, you we, oh we came to the point when uh you know we are close to breakthrough and uh some people became uh, attacked through some weird ways of non-material ways the attacks themselves mean nothing to me but the outcome of them are very serious so I am one that will want to look at the people and how the, it affected them and help them out. So yes, I am ready to help. And I have offered my protection as much as that is worth to humanity. But remember, I am not an angel and I do not have special powers in the third dimension. But I do wish to be helpful in whatever ways that they can um, they can allow. 
Wonderful, thank you. Yes. So how do you see it from your perspective? How does it look? It, it looks serious to me, but I do see that they will be stopped. And so I am not worried about that because I see that it is not to be that they destroy the world. It will not happen. What do you think about the choice? The choice of the person who is under the pressure? The choice of the peoples. We must give them encouragement and support because that is what we are here to do. And that is the only way they will survive this. Of course, there is some physical damage. They must get help for that. But spiritually, there is much, there are many that are supporting them. When you were in the body, did you have any attacks of that sort? Of course I did. There were times when I could not feel any spirits at all. There were times when um, I felt like I was a failure. I felt low and unsuccessful. And I felt like I had made many mistakes. And I had done some things that were unforgivable to some people. And you know what I mean by that. But uh -huh. I prayed about it, and I asked all those that were in power, what was wrong with me at that time? And do you know what they said to me? How I was responded to, just be yourself. You are moving forward. Talk to God. Let him become who you are as much as possible. Because he has a sense of humor. He, has, he knows how to play tricks on people as well. <laughs> but he knows all the things that you have done. And so that brought me around a little bit, but still did not make me feel great. I had to forgive myself and move forward. And... And not f just forgive myself, but to challenge myself that this, my, this life was to help others and not to be, uh, not to help myself. Although I do have to take care of myself, it was not to help myself. I see, uh, thank you. Um... What, is, what else is happening? Um, how do you see our development lately? What's, what's, what's on your mind? What are you working on? What is who working on? Um, Kutumi. I am Kutumi. What's, what is happening? What are the developments other than uh, attacks? What oh, are this? there are many things, many, many things, but uh, many things look uh, dark and and out of control and then the, out of that sometimes something beautiful comes but right now things look like they are not so good but they are will work out things will work out there are decisions still to be made that have not been made yet so but the world is a crazy, crazy place right now for me. I look at it and I go, oh my goodness. How can it be like that? I, can't, I could not live in that world. <laughs> but yet, uh, there are many places where I could. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, we are uh, here in the, in the nature and... Uh, Everything is fine and the weather is great, but they over the head they fly. Uh, there are uh, how do you call them? Uh, military planes are flying, practicing. Oh every yes. Day. So, so it's a uh, great your, reminder where we are. Your particular military is very, very active, very active, and there are other militaries that are also very active right now, and they are all practicing and. They're doing projects and war games. I hope they do not get to use them, but in the Middle East, it certainly looks like something may happen. Uh-huh. 
gosh. All right. Um, I have personal questions. Let's finish the public part and um, end up with a blessing, and then I will speak to you about my personal things. Very well. Do you want a blessing? Yes. Um, let's. Uh, yeah. Let's ask you for a blessing. Okay. Otatora, morivatas. Yakaravoti atoravosisu. Shaziv yam to putu Yarvandia Vyashabia on a Maya Gaya. Thunders and Zevia warm fiaba. We are high, was a shayum, not a chim de oilas of yapa. Who could yab one yanam, yanam to Zevia warba? Kavia, tell yab you name your lady again you to sing me. In two Juban, Zemjian Avrian, the Zetara Rampa Vota, or Rodia Ora, Yam Yaz Yav, if you are at all Anza. Titi Wata, your water is was a Zemjian in them. And so they are for me. More as of ya on the forty sons, Zem, Shiv your Wabai, what us? Tish, Mukhev give yas. Blessings. Blessings. I just prayed for all those that are in trouble and all those that need help. Give them strength and energy, love and guidance and healing. I will be with them in spirit and help them as much as I can with their spiritual progress. Because when you have spiritual progress, you also have progress with the help, health and the mind and all other things. The spirit can bring many great gifts to the body. And so therefore I pray for these people that the body be strengthened by the spirit for which I can help them. I said Thank several you. other things as well, but that was the main gist of it. Thank you much. At this point, I will uh, stop the recording and I wanted to ask you some private questions. So goodbye, everybody. Um, Very well.